y'all have that support back home for us. Man, I'm so grateful. Everybody from my church, kids from the gym, my parents are here, my brother, my cousins should have surprised me. They surprised me, man. I'm, I'm very grateful that they came. The guys that I grew up with, my, uh, all three of us are a year apart. Um, man, I'm, I'm just so blessed, man, to move back to Florida, move back to December 3rd, 2020, with one focus in mind of being a champion. So now I'm going to do it twice, really three times, because I won that Johnny Open fight, which I don't know if y'all know about. But, I mean, even from that fight, I gained some moments, right? Making the right decisions at the right time. Like, I took that from that fight, you know, from him and specifically. Josh is a solid fighter. He's throwing wild. So, you know, sharpshooter. But, man, I'm just, I knew, I knew I was claiming victory. That's what I decided to do. I made up my mind. And I'm just, I just thank God, man. I'm doing what I love. But now I get to get out of here. I'm going to run up to Orlando and celebrate my little sister, which is a lot bigger than this. She, um, after, you know, uh, what's it called? At West Point, United States Military Academy. Shout out to the F4 Frog Unit. Um, she just finished her acceptance day, which is from the time technically basic training. So to all the servicemen and women out there, now she starts her first year, first year as a cadet. So we get through this, spin up to Orlando, fly up there, celebrate her, and I'll be back. And then, uh, congrats to your sister. And then one last question. So for those that don't know, you actually opened uh, Impa's Refinery this week. <laughs> yeah. I know how much it means to you to not only but give back to the community when it comes to the knowledge you have gained. So how important is it for you at this stage in your career? My, my thing is, like, you're not a champion unless you want to build up other champions in life. Um, that's, that's in fighting, but outside of it. Some of these kids, man, they've been turning their lives around. Some kids are going to the gym at 6 a.m. before school. Like, the gym is meant to be a beacon of hope, and that's it. Like, I, I, can care, I, mean, I care if you want to be a top-level fighter, I will get on you, push you, challenge you, do everything that it takes to get there. More importantly, I want to see what God's going to do for your life. Let people know that unconditional love is based off two things. Proverbs 14, 23, all hard work brings profit, but mere talk is going to poverty. And then um, how long are you going to wait before you demand the best of yourself? And I ask them that every day in different ways. And these kids are rising up. So many of them were here. I'm so grateful. And um, I look forward to getting back in the gym with them on Monday. Awesome, brother. <laughs> it's a little shiny for me, but I appreciate it. You know, I've never really, you just, I usually have my cross, but. This is cool. Congratulations on making the finals yet again. Back to back years. Um, even the same opponent is kind of weird in itself. Like, but I think that shows your development as a fighter. Thank you. What would you say we put on display tonight as that development? I say I, IQ. You know, we learned from lessons from the past. We, you know, making a choice in the present. Uh, great trainers. Things like little adjustments before and after, like before injury in the fight that my whole team did. I've been really focused more on my faith. You know, sometimes in life you can get you gotta be on this faith journey, but people don't think it's like Christian doesn't mean perfect. Christian doesn't mean you make all the right decisions. So I just be really just been like focusing on that, you know, like just knowing that when I'm healthy, the best fighter in the world, and trusting God for that. And I got teammates who I want to be the best. Like I have teammates like Wind and Delano and everybody. I say like my goal is to be the best to ever do, and I want your goal to be the best to ever do. So we raise the standard, and that's what it's been. It's been a it's been a testimony of raising the standard in life. Crazy standard and everything, and, and you see that tonight. Josh is an excellent fighter. Like, I have so much respect for his dad. When I got knocked out by Buckley, the first person to talk to my dad was Conan. And like, I, won't, I won't disrespect their household or their name. I think he talks too much, you know, and it's like, that's what it was. I don't think he focused like he needs to. Like, you try to stare somebody down. I say, if you're going to talk to me, you're going to talk trash. Talk to me when nobody's looking. Talk to me when I'm talking to cameras, because we could do it then. Um, I think that too many times in this world we're so caught up on. Like you talk about mental health, you talk about just like what you go through, and the second, the second you see somebody, you want to break them down negatively. No, talk with your fists, talk with your hands. There's so many kids you see jumping off bridges that we don't know about just because they're not on the other side of the camera. What's that mean? For me, it's like, represent right, you know, because now you got to eat those words and think about what you said. And I just want Josh to know he's like, he's not validated by that. Just like, let that go, and you can be so much better, but you're so caught up in being angry and being a brat, it's not who he is. It's not. It's fake. And I think that, like, if you want to take it there, it doesn't matter if there's a cage. To me, and I think that we we try to lead these kids down the wrong path, and then you see some kid get shot up because they want to open their mouth at the wrong time. Somebody going through a bad day, they don't care. They'll kill themselves and kill the person in the car next to them for no reason. And they watch us fighters. We're obligated, but people. Say, I used to have this guy. He would always tell me, "Say you're um, you're obligated, but you're not obligated to the next generation." And it's true. Like, you can act like you're not. Before you know it, some kid gets shot up, and then like, they're like, they copy what you said. 
And calm down talking trash to the wrong people because some people are crazy enough. You never know what that day they split. And then what do you do when you're burying a kid because they try to copy you on TV? And I think MMA, MMA fighters, athletes do a terrible job of that. I saw during the Olympics, and I saw a guy talking about he goes through depression, then he's talking about all the people in his heat are going to be depressed. Who cares how much money you make, how many gold medals and champions you have, if you don't really care about people? People are going to make mistakes. I've made many mistakes, like life, relationships, whatever, money. It doesn't matter. A guy loves you unconditionally. One thing that like really pisses me off is to see like fighters think they're all gangster and tough, and then when they do it, he, he try to talk to me after the fight, saying, oh, it's not personal, it's not this. Like, you say it's personal, it's not this. You want to beat the shit out of me. I'm quoting him. My pants got on me, I swear. It's like, what, what, what is it going to end? When you see 10 people kill themselves for what? Right? You don't know what somebody goes through. You don't know what these kids go through. But I just, like, my standard is, like, be a champion in that ring. Be a champion yeah. outside of it. You could be a victory because you see people fighting. That's yeah. what you saw tonight. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, uh, one last question here before I take a few minutes of your time. Now that you're fighting for the belt again, you're fighting for the championship again, um, how much confidence does that give you going into that ring again? I used to say this a lot when I started my career. My confidence is in, in, in me. It's in my Christ. You know? I, I, I've always focused like this. Like I don't need confidence. I need faith. Right? Because you could have confidence and it could be a wave. You could have a rough day one day and then something shakes and you're like, not sure. Confidence is a very like shaky foundation. But my faith knows this. Like No matter what, I'm going to step forward and claim that victory and move forward with my life. So I'm definitely you know, confident in my God is. And I just focus on this. Like, I have faith that you'll see me with my hands raised in Saudi Arabia. PFL 2024 light heavyweight champion. And, uh, man, whoever the winner between Johnny Edwards and Gideon Edwards is, I'll fight both of them. Uh, I'm looking forward to that day. Yeah. Thanks. This is a beautiful fight. And obviously, there was a lot of trash talk, not on your end, but rather on Johnny Edwards. Right. You mentioned it. It's like, all right, time to move on. Does it feel like closing the chapter for you now that you've gotten the win twice? That's not to disrespect him, but does it almost feel like a book closing in a way? I don't like to look at it like that. I think there's still so much for me to learn from this book and this chapter, right? Josh did some really good things tonight that I need to get better at and, like, see. There were some decisions I made in the fight that obviously helped claim the victory, but the things I probably could have been better than my trainer see. So I don't want to close the book and not miss out on the lessons, if, you know, for this, for what we're saying here. Um, you never know. I could fight Josh again, so I got to learn from the last two and get the finish in the next one. Because, hey, Josh, he's been staying in it. He's in the PFL. He's making his money doing his thing. Uh, it can be the first match for the next year. We can be the last again. I, or in the middle, or whatever it may be. But um, it's not closed right now. Like, uh, what I tell a lot of the, the Dieter and I talk about, practice never ends. Like, what can I do to get better, right? And, and that's part of the notes I need to take from this fight. And you're a guy that always wants to move forward. You kind of was listening in on pretty fight Zoom. You have so many different ventures going on. Is there other, any possible kind of, Avengers, we can see in the future from the input because you got your hand in so many different hats here. Yeah, um, we're entering a motorcycle film festival, on a Motor Festival, by me and my team. But not so cool things. I'm going to tell a story like the spirit of the ride. Um, I won't tell you the title yet, but it's not official. But um, I just love motorcycles, love riding, which I'm going to do this weekend. Um, and just to share, I think like what happens is fighters like just focus on fighting, just do this. You get told that. They see fighters at the end of the career, they're bitter being coaches or they don't have any money. Like, you should realize God made you a lot more complex than you think, and you should you know, go for different things, especially when you're young. Maybe you fail here, maybe you do great here. You'll find different things, and as I show you, each fight, as it continues, I keep claiming these victories. Don't think that you can't do more because you do one thing, and that's for everybody. That's whether it's being in shape, falling in love, finding your faith, just journaling. Do something. I'm not saying you have to, like, for me, it's like I like to challenge myself and drive my trainers and team extremely wild and say, hey, let's do this last minute, which they do not appreciate. But um, never limit yourself. When I was little, my dad never let me say impossible or can't. Neither did my mom. They never, both of them never let me say that. And I'm living that life now. I think you all appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, bro. You are coming. Oh, I'm sorry. I have a couple of questions for you. Yes, sir. Last year, before you started fighting for the Olympics of 2023, we were talking about what happened when you left the UFC, mm -hmm. being homeless. Now you're a million dollars just there, going for another million dollars. What does it mean for you to not just go on and go for the belt, but now be defending the championship? I'm grateful, man. It's just full of gratitude. That's it. That's it. Like, it's, uh, it's cool. I always see myself as champion. Um, every single fight I always consider it my first amateur fight, and I say consider it my first title fight, one and the same. 
got to be better. Got to refine. Continue to improve and move forward. See what my teammates say. Um, very grateful to be in the PFL. Right, I get to stay active. I have friends who are top five in the UFC and all that stuff, and it's hard for them to get a fight and get work. For me, I get to be in the PFL, consistently get to work so long as I earn it and I move forward and I make that choice. So the fact that I'm here, the fact that they're building out Europe, Brazil, uh, Australia, all over the world now, Africa, Mina, it's cool because I can see other people's lives changing, and that, that's what matters most to me. Like, I'm going to go get that title. I'll get that million dollars. That's like, what is it to gain the world? And not have Christ Lewis say it, I think. It's like, what is it to get in the world and not have love or just see people do well? Like, I got my brother Delano here. Like, I have my cousins, people. Like, those moments are more cool to me. Welcome my dog on a, <laughs> through, the, through the, in the forest, right? Like, that stuff's cool. Like, you can make money in and out of tight of fighting. Probably make it faster outside of fighting, right? So, um, just, uh, Robbie Lawler said this before they fight. He's like, you get paid to do this. The stuff they told you not to do when you're little. So go have fun. And that's the truth. Like, guys, vets who just who break it down simply. You get paid to do this. Or any other time in the world, you're going to get in trouble. So I'm, I'm enjoying every bit of it. Every feeling. Every bit. It's a blessing. We were here in January for the PFL versus Bellator press conference. We had a chance to talk. We were really looking forward to winning that belt in 2000. Unfortunately, it didn't happen. Then you bounced back out on the winning team. Can you talk about that mindset you had to overcome that? Get back to the championship. Johnny Edward, excellent fighter. Made me better, right? That old fight, very appreciative of him. I won that fight. I could care less about the belt, that, that stuff that fade away. It's more about who won the fight, which means a lot more to me. And I think y'all get to know me now. Like, the record, this, like, I, I don't care what the judges say. I know what happened. And I respect them. So I earned that opportunity again to get that one. I'm, I'm very grateful. And uh, I keep showing who I am. I, I know what I've done. I know what I'm doing. And I don't know so much about the belt, the physical thing itself, or the, the accolades from people. I wanted to see, like, I had so many people say, don't take that fight. Don't do this. You know, he's Johnny Edwin. He's one of the best fighters in history, which he is. And I showed what I do. And, uh, man, there's so much to learn from it. Johnny showed who he is. He's got a great team, great trainers, great coaches. I feel like, you know, I mean, I don't think we're not, like, not friends. We just don't talk in general. But I feel like in another life would be cool. He likes to be in nature. He get out and he's a little weird. So am I. So, I think that would be cool, but in this in this industry, you need enemies to do co-workers, right? So, like, that's a cool blessing. I'm, my mindset is you keep moving forward. I was like, the reason I wear cowboy hat is like one day when I'm on ranch, I was going to say cowboy up, you always move forward, and no matter if calf died or had no harvest, you keep moving forward, you keep working and trusting God, and that's that's what it was. It wasn't like, I just asked my trainer, Vita, what do you think? What can I do? My trainers, my, my teammates, got right back in the gym. Last question here. Now, forward looking, your opponent from the beginning, you know very well. Same type of person. Okay. What are your expectations going for that fight? I expect the best version of himself. But that's a good man, respectful. Um, respectful of fighters, an awesome fighter, good man. And I'm looking forward to claiming that victory, right? I mean, <laughs> it's funny, like. Eventually, you keep fighting these guys. You gotta keep taking them out. They're gonna keep trying to crack the code. I'm gonna keep coming up on top. Keep claiming these victories. I think they're all awesome. We got an ATT fighter in here, so but they're all good people. Very sweet. Um, hopefully, it's back fighting soon. We do a lot of adversity. I say this like I mean I love the people from ATT. I think they're all cool. Like I don't I don't have issues with them. Thank God they have another gym because all we just be fighting each other in the same gym. It's probably a little bit more awkward, right? So we already do that at Kill Cliff. I know some of them fight each other there. So it's nice to have another camp over there. I mean, those people in Coconut Creek, that crew, like they're just try they're just people trying to figure out their life. I think we make it too big of this like fake rivalry of like, oh, these fighters they just found a gym they walked into that they're accepted at. If you're gonna be successful at Kill Cliff, be successful at TT, you'll fail at ATT, you'll fail at Kill Cliff. You gotta find a place for you. Some people will trade in the middle of nowhere and do great things. Some people are just themselves. And I think we gotta we gotta look at it like that. It's always this versus that. Why can't be this and that? So, um, yeah, I expect of letting them to get on paper, study film, do great things, and um, come to title fight, I have my hands raised. Right. 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 You, uh, your opponent, well, you're someone that clearly gets your motivation internally, right? But what is it about Yakshin Muradov that maybe will make you wake up in the morning excited to go to the gym? It can never be him. That's the thing. It's like it, it, it's the one that I'm fighting, he doesn't exist. <laughs> I want to beat him every day, and like it's uh, 
I would say, how would I fight if I was leaving Evans Armies? And I look at it like, I got a lot of people to take out, right? And he's one of those guys, like, he's very good, but I, he's not my validation. Because really in PFL, it's cool. Like, you have an alternate. I could be so focused on this guy, and then all of a sudden the fight's not happening, then you're like, what? I don't care. Like, I could care less if Josh got exchanged one second before this fight. All I knew is at the end of the day, I'm claiming victory with my hands raised. And I just look at like this big battlefield, all these warriors got to kill them all to get to where you need to go. And you don't get to pick who it is. They all got different skill sets. So that's it. It's not him getting me up in the morning because a person can pass away. Then where does your motivation go? He could say he doesn't want to fight. Like, I don't put my uh, future on somebody else's hands. I just say this like, it's a verse that really like Rosh Kitch with you. Do everything you can if you want to play the world. So if that's my standard, no person could ever reach that. Because I technically you can't reach that. So it's like I'm going after this thing that's almost non existent. And uh, I love that. Awesome. Now, obviously, with the, uh, last year you got it done. You're able to help out a lot with the community, people around you. Mm-hmm. If you get it done this year, what are some of the other things you maybe want to go ahead and, and add on to that resume? I'm going to build out PFL Africa. All right? Francis, what's up? <laughs> you know, like, mm-hmm. I, uh, it's cool. Tony went to Africa. And I can't say enough great things about Tony because my team drives Tony insane. <laughs> but, but we love her and Gabby and everybody, and um, the whole PFL staff's amazing. So I know she was out there, but it's like I just see all these African fighters. And I don't care if you're African, Brazilian, like you're a human that God made. So it's like anywhere I can go to help fighters get better. I just like to travel the world and see those people like change their lives. That's what I like to do. Um, yeah, keep helping my family, get my parents down to Florida, support my sister, you know, like spoiler while she's in college, send her all the, the snacks and stuff. And I don't know, just like. I'll uh, be doing two of trek rides mm-hmm. and um, uh, the tree. All of us for sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I was wondering with the uh, fight last year and then now tonight, just what are your thoughts? Do you think Josh fought better tonight? Yeah. You fought better tonight. <laughs> Did you see him hit me? <laughs> no. He's yeah. coming after you. I know last year it was five rounds, right. was three rounds, and I know you want to finish. You said that. Oh, you gosh, like I want to finish. finish. I know that. I know. So I'm, Josh, I'm with, yeah. do you think you, because you're the fighter, what are Watch it, but what are your thoughts of uh, Josh, how he came at you tonight, and then also how you also took this fight and won it? Maybe both. I'm, I think I matured you know, as a fighter, whereas before that, let's throw it out. Let's be smart. I started making some adjustments in the fight. Josh himself, you know, say he got better. It's, it's, it's like for something that he's done for so long, I expect more out of him. I think his standard changed when he had the first fight. He finished Sadabu, Sadabu got hurt. In Salt Lake City, I was in the locker room with him. He's talking to Rob through the TV. I'm like, let's go, mother this. I'm like, Josh, just focus on who you are. This fight, you know, he's talking to me, staring me down. I'm like, you're so like losing focus. And he has such a good dad and team. And he's insulting them by that. So that's my message to him. I told him we can fight anywhere. We can even train together for all I can. We can fight again. Just, like, don't do that to yourself, you know. Um, I think that he made a choice to go for it more so than showing he's a better fighter. Because if he just sat down on some punches, probably could have got better shots in. He committed to things. That was good. But it's like going for broke at every single time. Or just, and then he still lost focus, screaming in there. And like what I said before the fight, how's a fish get caught? If you have a fish get killed, it gets caught on that hook, right? He opened his mouth mid-fight and got hit with the hook. I look back and watch it. He's lacking focus. To me, respectfully, it's an insult to his dad and his team. Because you're sitting in front of your dad, who I really respect, and you're, you're you're taking it as a joke. Like, you're better than that. And I challenge him for that. Fight me in the parking lot, fight me somewhere else. I mean it. Your teammates here, tell them that. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. His dad really encouraged me at a time in my career where many people may have never fought again. And the first thing that his dad did was went to my dad, because he knows what that means. And for Josh to show up the way he is and just play around too much and just not be the fighter that he is, like, I'm, I'm disgusted by that. You know, you're in a fight and you think it's a joke? To change your family's life? You say that's what it is? And you're, woo! That's when he got hit. And I saw him change. I was like, oh, shoot. Don't do that. Like, say what you want. Like, we're Christian people, but don't, don't think this isn't a fight. You could die in there. What if that was the last time you fell? Then, it, then it's like, what? Because you wanted to joke around? I met his little brother. So I think he improved, but I think he lost focus and he needs to mature. And that's it. And I just didn't want to ask you going into that third round. And just what were your coaches, yourself, your thoughts? One thing I thought too was you sort of 
chopped him, quieted him when you had him pinned up against the cage. But he couldn't do anything when you used your strength and your ability to do something like that. I'm just wondering how much the curtain could pull back and, and tell us about the third round and your thoughts going into that and what you wanted to do. Yeah, well, we got a great group in here. We went we we trained them all up the wall. Robbie Lawler, Juan, are so smart. All these guys. It's a testimony to my team, but Josh doesn't want Bird. I'll tell you, he lost the fight last year. I know he fades. He fades. I'm a, these are the secrets. He fades. He's shown it every fight. He fades, he fades, he fades. And you hear the, uh, the this. And it's like, he's on that cage, and he's not making choices. It was, it was too easy to turn him. He's a collegiate wrestler. Like, you've been in a gym since you were little. You've seen people on the cage since the day you were in diapers or whatever, how long it's been there. And it's an insult to the American top team team. He needs to own up to that. Like, be better. I respect Johnny Evelyn because he comes to the fight. He doesn't talk. He wanted to take me out, and I like that. And he's like, let's go. Got better from that, and I look forward to that day we get to go to, I get to get in that cage again. But, like, just quitting. It's like, I can break you, yeah, for sure, but as a man, you're going to let somebody break you? That's insulting. Like, don't, don't take the nice guy approach for just being soft. I think that he played too much. He lost focus, lost sight of where he is. Got too crazy, got too wild, lacked discipline. I took advantage of that. Last year in the world title, I had him against the cage, and I said, I'm a world champion, I'm a world champion, in his ear, and he faded. Fighting's deeper than just throwing punches and knees and stuff. Kill that guy. And um, his spirit broke, his soul broke, and he didn't do it. Hang on, how you doing? Uh, you got Jelani Taylor by your side My dog. Right, right now. If I remember correctly, you couldn't make it to Utah, right? It was Xavier Travis here last night. So what does it mean to you to have him back by your side right here? Oh, man. Jelani was the first guy that courted me at Kill Cliff. You know, when I said that my brother, we've been through so many different moments together. When I saw him fight Roy McDonald in uh, Wales, I was in Dominican Republic. He's my family. He's, he's, my, he's my Jamaican brother. And he will let you know how Jamaican he is every single day. <laughs> He finds a way. He uh, took the day off just to help us get better. And, like, he's made some great points. And it's, it's awesome having a teammate like that. You can be in some gyms, right? And then that, they can probably attest at any big gym. Not everybody's going to get along. But no matter what, jelana has been there loving. We've been to church together. We've had good conversations. We've shed tears together. You don't always get that. And then, you know, iron sharpens iron, so you always get better together. I'm looking forward to cornering them. I'm looking forward to seeing life. And if you knew what this guy's been through, I would never wish that upon anybody. But he's shown a lot of love, kept showing up, and that's why I know one day you'll see Delano Taylor as a champion. Give it some time. Yeah, I'm just doing that crazy tonight. Your teammate, Elvin Espinosa, got a huge pop. I think none were bigger than the one you got, the reaction you got from the crowd before the fight, during the fight, after the fight. I feel like you've become a star before our very eyes in the last year, maybe a year or so. Do you feel like that? Do you feel like you're a star? Star. Mom says I am. <laughs> <laughs> so, if my mama says I guess I can't argue. I, I believe with the PFO we become the stars together, man. It's sooner or later stars in the distance, right? You see great legends, Shogun Rashad, you see Kamaru, Bobby Lawler, guys who are getting interviewed just like me. And I take a lot of lessons and inspiration from them. To say a star, I, I appreciate it and I, I, I definitely see where the PFO is putting me at the forefront. I'm I'm honored, I'm grateful. I've come from Challenger Series, been in my car. But I never want to get too big of a head. Mm-hmm. I'm like y'all. You know, you're doing what you love. It's an honor to have you here. Without you guys, I'm not getting asked any questions because I'm definitely not talking to myself that much. <laughs> so, um, we're doing it together. And I think we got to. It's cool, I mean, that people recognize it. Elvin Espinosa is one popular dude. If you go to Miami, every single, every other restaurant, place you go to, someone's going to say they know Elvin. And they will let you know how much they know Elvin. And Elvin's awesome. Yeah. And I see why. To be a star, that's a, it's an honor. And I accept it and I receive that blessing. But I also think there comes a responsibility with it. And if I'm going to be a star, I want to be challenged to get better. You know, I want to be a star to help other people become stars. So I want to see PFL grow. I just want to see PFL grow. I, want to see, I don't want to see Monopoly or UFC. I don't want it to be, oh, these fighters get tickets. I want PFL to do better in places, too. I'll be real about it. PFO can show a lot of things, but they got to do better, too. Um, I am I'm, I'm blessed that this organization has given me the platform to show who I am and be who I am. 
And I'll uh, I'll cure that mantle and I'll buy it, so that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Then on the last one, we're going on the topic of stars and legends. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw you talking to Roy Jones before the fight and also Ray Lewis after the fight. So how cool is it that like the Inbook and I stories get into people that are stars outside of the scope of MMA? That's cool. I used to watch Ray Lewis speeches. I watched Hall of Fame speech. Roy Jones Jr., so many boxing matches. Gosh, two men who've just done great work. And one guy, I was, I was sitting at his bar with him, I asked the guy, like, I was asking him, what would you tell yourself at this age? Like, what would you tell your 30 year self, 26 year self? I asked the guy, what would you say? He goes, if you're in the room full of great people, you get to talk to them, that means you're going to be great too. And when, I was, when Roy Jones came to the locker room, I was like, it's like a, it's a challenge. Go be great. Go be great. Ray Lewis was super encouraging. He said I inspired him. I'm like, man, like, it's cool when somebody that inspires you you get to inspire them. You don't always get those moments. And he challenged me. He challenged me to be better. He challenged me to let it go. So watch this next fight. I'm so sorry. Be better, right? It's my sister FaceTiming me. My bad. Can, can we face on my sister? Hold on. This is rude, but you got And I, I got you. That's my baby sister. What's up, V? Hey, everybody. <laughs> Go Army. Congratulations. Hey. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Love you, V. I got to go. I'm, I'm being rude right now. What's up, F4 Frogs? Hey, y'all. All right, I love you. Go Frogs. Hey. See you tomorrow. That's my munchkin. I don't know what's <laughs> so, I don't know how. I, I put my phone on Do Not Disturb and her phone gets to so, so. meant to be. Yeah, so um, rundown. So it's boxing, MMA, martial arts, or, um, mixed martial arts, kickboxing, all that. We already got a wrestling academy. Ideally, teammate Jordan Oliver would start with that. So shout out to J.O. for talking through that. I train a Dieter, boxing, amateur boxers, taking all the martial arts and helping people get better. It's for fighters, everyday people. To me, it's a neutral ground. Anybody's welcome, other gyms, really, as long as you want to be a better person and better fighter. And better person in life. I have people who would never throw a punch at somebody or ever want to wrestle or do a jiu-jitsu match. I had a jiu-jitsu program too. But I just wanted to be a place. I'm in South Miami. I'm next to Coral Gables. And I'm next to some of the worst parts of Miami too. I'm blessed to be at a solid location. Like I said, the two things it's based off of is my favorite Bible verse. All hard work brings profit. But mere talk leads only to poverty. Proverbs 14.23. And the quote by Epictetus, how long are you going to wait before you demand the best of yourself? And I always tell everybody, how long am I going to wait before I demand the best of myself? commit my life to this, you know, to see people who are, I wanted to be a safe space. I wanted to be the, the vision, like if a kid can't get a shower, like just come by the gym, I'll open it up for you. You know, families can come train, like from sleeping outside the gym to sleeping in a gym at points or being like, I just want people to know like how gym started out wasn't about forget ATT, let's go kill Cliff. Like gym was actually a place for people in the community to come, train, get better, know their martial art. Yes, you build world champions, but there'll be a lot of people you see in gyms who never, ever get, get on the international stage. It was a place to keep people off the streets. Uh, people get over addictions. People go through some, we've been through domestic violence, and I want anybody to come. So if you're a first responder, teacher, nurse, public figure, um, public health, uh, doctors, veterinarians, like you always, and veterans, journalists, journalists are part of it now. All the journalists, please come by. Um, you get 50% off, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart. It's, it's one of those things, and it's not crazy price, like, we talk about that. It's just, I don't do contracts. I just want people to know, like, keep coming back. Let you know, like, this is a place where you're loved. If you don't have food, hope you get food. Like, you get a million dollars, you realize it's like, uh, you can keep building it, but it's better to give than to receive. So that's what I want this place to be, just where people feel like they've been given a lot of love. I love it. Congrats. Thanks. All right, guys, you good? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, for sure.